we have been walking through the book of Proverbs this summer. And you might say, well, I haven't been keeping up as well. Well, guess what? The great thing about it is you can start today. You can jump in today just reading Proverbs 27, the 27th chapter of Proverbs. Today, you can jump in and you can be caught up with us and you can just join us for the ride. Because when we get to July, guess what we're going to do? We're going to start over in Proverbs chapter 1. So you got time. You might say, well, Chris, I might only get half of it. Well, if you get half of it, then you'll end up getting all of it, okay? So you can join us. So today, take your Bible and turn to Proverbs chapter 27. Turn, tap, swipe, flip, whatever you need to do to get to Proverbs chapter 27. We're going to look at a number of verses in that chapter. But as you turn there, I want to read to you an incredible lyrical uh, poem. And it goes like this. So no one told you life was going to be this way. Your job's a joke, you're broke, your love life's DOA. It's like you're always stuck in second gear when it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year. I'll be there for you when the rain starts to pour. I'll be there for you like I've been there before. I'll be there for you. Why? Because you're there for me too. Now some of y'all are going, Chris, that didn't sound like a poem at all. But that's only because you've never watched Friends. And so you didn't recognize that that was the theme song from the show Friends. And, and, And we just, that show Friends encapsulates so much of life. You know, TV has given us lots of great friendships when you think about it, right? You've got friends, right? With friends, you've got Chandler, Joey, Ross, Rachel, Monica, Phoebe. Then I was thinking about some other great shows that taught us about friendship, like Seinfeld, right? George and Jerry and Elaine and Kramer. Or maybe maybe those aren't your thing. Maybe for you it was Saved by the Bell with Zach and Kelly and Slater and Jesse and Screech and Lisa. And you're like... Some of y'all are going, yeah, some of y'all are going, that was still too young for, I, that, I don't know anything about that yet. Well, we'll get there. What about Cheers? What about Cheers, right? Sam and Diane or Rebecca, depending on the season, right? And then you got Cliff and you got Carla and you got Woody and you got Norm and you got Frazier. You got all these people that were friends that all were gathered together. Some of y'all are going, Chris, that's still too new for me. Well, what about that? What about these four great friends, Dorothy Blanche, Rose, and Sophia, the Golden Girls, right? Some of y'all just, I just spoke your love language just now, some of you, right? Or maybe you need to go a little farther back to Fonzie and Richie and Potsy and Ralph and Joni and Chachi of the Happy Days, right? Hey, right? But TV taught us a lot about friendships and the importance of friendships and the need for friendships, Often these friendships were meant to remind us of our true friends, of the people in our friend circle. I remember in the 90s, some of them would go, you're such a Phoebe. You're such a, you're the Phoebe of our group. I remember I got called the screech in my group one time. I wasn't real confident about that. I didn't feel real good about it, but that's the way it was, right? It was just, these were who we are. Friendships shape us and mold us, so it's important to have true friends. And in Proverbs chapter 27, we see a number of verses that speak to true friendship. This is what we are finding. So if, you got, if you're there with me, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 9, I want to start with just a, a simple verse. Verse 9, it says this, oil and incense bring joy to the heart. And the sweetness of a friend is better than self-counsel. In other words, it's sweet, it's joyous to have friends. Friends make our lives better. They make it more sweet and often more bearable. The great philosopher Winnie the Pooh said, A friend is someone who helps you up when you're down. And if they can't, they lay down beside you and listen. That's the kind of friend that I want in my life. That's the friend I want to be. And so we see how sweet friendship can be. The Bible tells us that life is better with friends. Solomon also wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, we see where uh, Solomon tells us that it's better to have two than one because you get a better result. You can do more together. You can help each other out. You can prop each other up and you can protect each other. Solomon also explains what the real basis for love is. 
or, or for a friendship is, which is love. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, he says this, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born of a difficult time. Notice it doesn't say, a friend loves at good times. A friend loves at comfortable times. No, a friend loves at all times. When life is good and when life is bad. When life is smooth. And when life is not, a friend loves at all times. And a brother is born out of adversity. In other words, your friendships deepen as you go through the valleys. Your friendships become deeper and closer as you go through hard times together. Today, I want to just give you four truths about good, true friends. Can you say that? Four truths about true friends. Four truths about true friends. Now, I made you say it twice so that the people who are watching along online right now can type that in the chat box so that they could be a part of our, our discussion today, okay? So let's get four truths about true friends from the book of Proverbs. First, true friends speak truth. True friends speak truth. Now, we all have people in our lives that just say what we want to hear. The, the, you know, maybe it's somebody that works under you at your job, and they don't want to upset the apple cart, so they're just going to say what you want to hear. Whatever you want to hear, they're going to say it, even if they don't believe it. You know, maybe it's that person that no matter how often you say, does this look good on me? They always say yes. And for the record, honey, when I say that to you, it's because it all does look good on you. Because you're beautiful. You are absolutely beautiful. I am a true fin- friend, and I'm being truthful. It is beautiful on you. Yeah, y'all are looking back like, well, now that I see her, you're right. See, here's the reality. True friends speak truth to one another. you got to have people in your life who will say what needs to be said. We need people who will give it to us straight. A true friend says what needs to be said. Proverbs chapter 27, verses 5 and 6. We're in Proverbs 27. Verses 5 and 6 say, Better an open reprimand than concealed love. The wounds of a friend are trustworthy, but the kisses of an enemy are excessive. In other words, it's better to be told the truth, even when it hurts from your friend, than to have your enemy just tell you what you want to hear. That, that, than to just not speak is wrong, that we should tell the truth to each other, we should love each other. A true friend loves at all times, and because of that, they are required to speak love to one another. Some people like to speak to others like jerks, though. Can we just be honest? Some people, they'll they'll just be jerks to other people, and then they'll say, well, I just wanted to be truthful. They'll start sentences with things like, no offense, but, or, listen, don't take this personally, but, and what they're really saying is, I want to say this, and I want an excuse to get out of it, because we don't have the relationship for me to be this brutally honest with you, and I'm just going to be a jerk. I had somebody one time, they came up to me and they said, Chris, no offense, but you need to lose some weight. And I looked at them and I said, no offense taken, you're 100% right. I need to lose some weight. And I said, but as long as we're being honest with each other, (laughs) there's some things you need to know too. The truth is I should not have added on because it was not loving. But a true friend, somebody who's got that equity in your relationship, you know what I mean? There's people that can speak to you, and then there's people that speak into you. And by the way, you need to make sure it's the right people that you allow to speak into you. Because the whole world's speaking at you. So you need to make sure which voices you're listening to. But a true friend, they can look at you and say, Chris, that was harsh, man. You shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have said that, Chris. That That was too far. Sometimes my wife will say to me, calm down, honey. Now, if anybody else tells me to calm down, I get pretty frustrated. When she tells me to calm down, I get frustrated then too, but at least I know it's coming from a place of love. Because she can speak the truth to me in love. We are to speak truthfully with each other, but we need the relationship base of love to be able to have the opportunity to speak that truth to each other. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 says, Speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. Speaking the truth in love. And he's speaking here to Christians, and so he's saying you should love each other well enough that you speak the truth, but you speak it in the right way. There is a right and a wrong way to say the right thing. You can say the absolute 
right thing, but if you say it the wrong way, we talked about it last week about quarrelsome people who have the wrong tone and how, and how they're abrasive and they're hurtful. They might be saying the exact right thing, but they're saying it the wrong way. I was uh, listening to a friend of mine talk about an apologist who came to a local college, uh, came to a local Christian college, and he had a debate with someone else from that college, uh, or not from the college, but from the community, about some, some things regarding creation and other things, you know. And they got into a discussion, and the apologist had every answer, had a response to every single question that was brought by the other person. And uh, I was talking, or I heard afterwards some discussion, and the person said, you know what, that Christian guy, he was right, but I don't care because I don't like him. Because he was a jerk. Why? Because he wasn't speaking in love, he was speaking to win an argument. And we have to speak truth, yes, but in love. And this is especially true of friends. You should not watch your friend who is walking down the road of addiction just go and be like, oh, well, there's nothing really I can do. Yes, you can. If you are a true friend, you will speak the truth in love. You don't watch your friend go and decide, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to try to juggle knives for the first time in my life. Let's just see how this goes. What are you going to do if they're your friend? Whoa, 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 let's start with bean bags. And then we'll get to chainsaws, but let's start with bean bags, right? Why? Because you love them, so you want to speak the truth. You are not ready for that. By the way, there are some of you, you've got friends in your life that are in relationships, and they're ready to take another step in that relationship, and what you need to say is, whoa, you're not ready for that yet. You're not trying to control them. You're trying to speak the truth in love. Let's make sure that our conversations are based in the right place. Let me ask you do, simply, do you have friends in your life that have the ability to speak to you the truth in love? Are there people in your life that can actually be honest with you? You might say, well, only a couple. Well, maybe that's why you're not getting enough honest communication. We should be people who allow others to speak truth into our life in love, and we should be loving in the way that we speak truth into other people. Secondly, true friends stick around. True friends speak truth, but true friends also stick around. Can I tell you, it's easy to just not be available in the hard times of life. There, there is, we live in such a busy world, there is always an excuse not to be at something. Always. There's always this, or there's always that. There's always a way out. There's always some other reason why I'm not available. But true friends stick around. When things are going well, lots of people want to be around. When things are going hard, not so many. The great American icon Oprah Winfrey said, everyone wants to ride with you in the limo, but a true friend is someone who will take the bus with you when the limos broke down. See, we got to be together even when life is hard. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 10 says, Don't abandon your friend or your father's friend. And don't go to your brother's house in your time of calamity. Better a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. In other words, stick close to the people who you love. Don't abandon them. Don't run from them. Be near them in their time of need. True friends stick around in hard times. Because if you've been around this world long enough, you know that there are equal amounts of hard times and good times. You might say, well, right now I'm in a really good time. Praise God for that. But one day, hard times will come again. The old preachers used to say, you've heard me say it multiple times, you're either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or going into a storm. Because storms are part of life. And so we must be there for each other when things get tough. The truth is that sometimes you don't know who your true friends really are until life gets tough. They're the ones that stick around when life is hard. Now, I know it's uncomfortable to be around people when things are hard. Chris, I don't know what to say. I know it's hard when you don't know what to say. I know that you're afraid that you're going to say the wrong thing and make things worse somehow. Let me tell you, one time I went to a hospital, and uh, one of the teenagers at my church had been in a really bad car wreck. And I got there, and things weren't good. I mean, he was in dire straits, and things were just bad. 
And I didn't know what to say. You know, what are you supposed to say in that moment? Hey, how are you doing? Right? No. Well, I know how you're doing. You're doing terrible. Your kid was just in a car wreck. You know, you want to be there. You want to say the right things, but you don't know what to say. And I remember I basically said nothing. I pretty much just sat there. Two weeks later, that guy was out of, out of the hospital and doing well. And uh, his mom called me and said, Chris, I just want you to know. I just want you to know the words that you said to us at the hospital meant more to us than you could ever imagine. Now, in my mind, I knew the truth. I didn't say many words. But there is power in the presence. And true friends are there. They stick around when life gets hard. Good friends stick around. Third, true friends sharpen each other. They speak truth. They stick around. They sharpen each other. True friends make each other better. They push each other on. They, they spur each other on to godliness. They help each other become the best they can be. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. Many of you know this verse. Iron sharpens iron, and one person sharpens another. Just like iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. The imagery here of iron sharpening the blade of a sword is clear, but I want to make sure you understand a few things about iron sharpening iron. First, sharpening requires friction. Sharpening requires friction. And so that's why you need people who can speak the truth in love to you. Because sometimes you need somebody to come along and say, dude, that's not right. Honey, that's not the right way to handle this. You need somebody that's willing to go against you and willing to push you and willing to help mold you into who you need to be. Sharpening takes time. It doesn't happen quickly. And so you got to stick around. you got to go through the hard times so that you can rub against each other, so that you can make each other sharper, so that you can challenge each other, so that you can exhort each other, so you can encourage each other, so you can strengthen each other, so you can rebuke each other when necessary. Why? Because iron sharpens iron. It makes us better. True friends support each other. Sharpening iron, though, is when you have iron sharpening against iron, it's very profitable because nobody likes to go to war with a dull sword. And so you need that sharpening to be the best you can be. You need that sharpening to be the best friend you can be, to be the best image bearer of Christ you can be, to be the best servant of our Lord Jesus you can be. You need someone who's willing to say, dude, there's some stuff in your life that needs to get cleaned out. Dude, there's some stuff that needs to be stripped away. And I'm willing to come alongside and rub against you. I'm willing to come alongside and create friction and, and to say the hard things and to be there for the long term so that you can become who you're meant to be. True friends encourage each other. What friend is constantly challenging you to be better? Or do you just have people around you who are like, you're great just the way you are. You don't need to change a thing. Well, unless your name is Jesus, you need to change a thing. There's something. I don't know what it is, but there's something unless your name is Jesus. What, what friends do you have around you that are willing to correct you? To tell you the truth, what friends do you have around you that are willing to support you and hold you up in hard times? Those are true friends. True friends speak truth. They stick together and stick around. They sharpen each other. Lastly, and we're going to step outside of the book of Proverbs for this one. True friends sacrifice for each other. True friends sacrifice for each other. When you love someone, you're willing to give up stuff to be there for them. You're willing to give up time. You're willing to give up treasure. You're willing to go and say, hey, you know what? I, I, I had a neighbor. He was, he was a good friend. And uh, he, one day he heard my car pull into the driveway, and he heard, you know, that dreaded, as my car came to a stop. And he said, hey, Chris. I said, yeah, what's up, Boyd? He said, uh, you know, I used to work. I used to work at a tire shop. And it sounds like you need some brakes. Would you like some help? I was like, I don't know how to change brakes. I know how to pay a guy to change brakes. That's all I know how to do. He's like, he's like well, let me help you. I said, absolutely, man. Thank you. What do you need me to go? I'll take care of it. You can just pay me. I'll bring you the receipt. You can just give me the money for the, for the pads and the drums, whatever. All right, whatever, man. Great. That's fantastic. And he came over, and he, he helped me 
And by help me, I mean he really did it, but he made me stand there beside him and showed me how he did it, right? But he invested time and he used his talent, why? To be a friend, to help me. A while later, his, his, uh, his family was going through some hard times and uh, one of his teenagers was struggling. He said, hey, Chris, can you make some time to come sit down and talk? Absolutely, I can make time for you. Because true friends sacrifice for each other. And no greater friend, no other truer friend showed this more than Jesus. John chapter 15, verse 13, Jesus himself said, No one has greater love than this to lay down his life for his friends. That is sacrifice. To be willing to be Captain America and jump on the grenade so that everyone else can live. To be willing to sacrifice your life your comfort, your health, whatever, to take care of other people. Sacrifice is part of friendship. I want to ask you, do you have any friends in your life that honestly you are sacrificing for? Because there are a whole lot of vampire friends out in the world today. I don't know if you know this or not. There are a lot of vampire friends. You know the ones I'm talking about. They just suck the life right out of you. You got those people. They don't want to give. They want to take, 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 take. But occasionally, I want to talk about me. And some of y'all got that, right? You got those friends in your life that just want you to give and give and give, and they're going to take and take and take. But the minute anything is asked of them, somehow they are not around. Are you the type of friend that sacrifices? Because true friends sacrifice for each other. The greatest love a person can show is to sacrifice his life for his friend. In this verse, we see two very key truths. First, Friends sacrifice for each other. Friends sacrifice for each other. The greatest thing a friend can do is sacrifice. But the second one is this, and it is most important. The reason we should sacrifice for a friend is because Christ sacrificed for us as our greatest friend. See, this this image was one that was directing us towards the sacrifice Christ was going to make when he was going to lay down his life for all who would believe in him. We are called to love others like Christ loved us, and he sacrificed everything for us. He left the perfection of heaven for us. He lived his perfect life in this sinful world and was lied about and blasphemed and slandered. Why? For us. He died a perfect death to pay the price of sin that I could not afford for me and for you. And then he rose from the grave to prove everything he said was true. And he did all of that. Why? For us. He went through all that pain, all that agony, all those years, all that slander. Why? For us. Because there's no greater love than anyone can have than to lay down his life for his friends. We should be loving, sacrificial friends because Christ is a loving, sacrificial friend to us as believers. Jesus was the greatest friend. Jesus spoke the truth in love even when people didn't want to hear it. And he still does through the Bible. Jesus stuck around. The Bible says he'll never leave us or forsake us. He sticks around. Jesus sharpened his disciples as he walked alongside of them for three years. And now, even now, he sharpens us through the power of his word and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus sacrificed his life for us. And even now, he sits beside the Father, interceding for us, going to God on our behalf. He is sacrificing his time and his effort even right now for us. Jesus is the greatest friend. I remember growing up singing that song, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sin and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Why can we carry everything to God in prayer? Because Jesus is sitting at his right hand and interceding for us every single day. I don't know what you're dealing with in your life. I don't know what you're facing in your life. What I do know is this, you need the greatest friend in your life. And yes, On earth, your best friend should be your spouse. You should invest time. You should sacrifice. You should stick together. You should speak the truth in love. But the reality is there is a greater friend. And for eternity, you need the greatest friend. And his name is 
Jesus? Have you put your faith in Jesus? Have you given him your life? Have you taken his sacrificial death in your place, repented of your sin, and put all of your faith in Jesus? Have you done that to become friends with the greatest friend? His name is Jesus. If you haven't today, I challenge you to do that. You might say, well, Chris, I'll be honest. Things are pretty good. I don't really need that. Well, here's my promise to you. You're either in a storm, you're going in a storm, or maybe you're coming out of a storm. But there is an eternal storm of separation from God that is waiting for you if you don't find your friend named Jesus. And if you don't put your faith in Jesus, no matter how good you think you've got it, no matter how good you think you've done, no matter how much you hope that it's all going to work out in the end, it will not apart from the sacrifice of Jesus. But he is waiting with arms open to receive you, to, to make you God's child if you will just put your faith in Jesus. I'm begging you today, if you've never put your faith in Jesus, come to Jesus. Receive his sacrifice for your sins. You say, well, Chris, I, I'm a Christian. I put my faith in Jesus. What do I do with this? The challenge is simple. Speak the truth in love. Because real friends speak truth. True friends speak truth. So be like Jesus. Speak truth to people. In love. Well, Chris, what else should I do? True friends, stick around. Jesus promised he'd never forsake us or abandon us. Don't forsake and abandon people in your life. Be a true friend. Why? Because Jesus is the truest friend. Well, Chris, okay, what else should I do? Well, I mean, what else did we talk about? You should sacrifice and you should sharpen each other. Be the type of friend that sharpens each other to be like Jesus. The Bible tells us that we are to become imitators of God. That means we are to look like God. How do you do that? By being sharpened one by another so that we can be like Jesus. And then give up what you need to give up to take care of your friends. Sacrifice for your friends. Why? Because Jesus was the greatest sharpening stone. And Jesus is the greatest sacrifice. Christian, be a friend like Jesus. Because here's what I can promise you. If you're a friend like Jesus... The lost world will recognize it. And they'll recognize there's something different. And then you'll have an opportunity to introduce them to Jesus. I don't know how you need to respond today, but we're going to take 30 seconds just quietly to give you a chance to respond. If you need to put your faith in Jesus today, just, just admit to him that you're a sinner. Repent of that sins, that means turn away from it and receive the blessing of God. Receive the grace of God into your life. Become a believer. Put your faith 100% in Jesus, in his death and resurrection in your place. Maybe for you, what you need to do is consider taking your next step of baptism, like Joni did. You can just text us, 864-879-4400, or come see me after the church. I'd love to talk to you about taking your next step. But if we will be friends like Jesus, the world will be changed by Jesus as we take the gospel into the world. Let's just take 30 seconds and commit to God what we need to during this time in response. Lord, I pray that we would be friends like Jesus. That we would speak the truth in love. That we would stick around when life is hard. That we would sharpen each other to become the best 
servants of you, the King, that we can be so that we can love people well. We can share the gospel. And Lord, I pray that we would sacrifice for each other. Lord, most of all, I thank you that Jesus is the greatest friend. That Jesus spoke the truth. That Jesus sticks around. That Jesus sharpens us. And that he sacrificed his life in my place. God, may I never lose the joy of understanding that Jesus paid a price he didn't know because I owed a price I couldn't pay. God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. As we close today, I want to ask you to do something for seven days. How many days am I asking you to do this for? Seven days. For the next seven days, including today, I want you to pray for our partner church, our sister church, Awakened City Church in Harriman, Utah. They have three different mission teams that are in town this week because they're going to do three different vacation Bible school type backyard Bible clubs in and around Harriman over the course of this week. And so they are seeking to share the gospel in a huge way. And they have asked for their partners to come alongside and pray with them and for them that God would do an amazing work over the course of this week. So I'm asking you for the next seven days, pray for Awakened City Church. Make sure to lift them up specifically by name and pray that God would do something amazing because I'm telling you the darkness that exists in the Salt Lake City Valley is something that can only be experienced. It can't be explained. But the oppression of the Mormon church there, there are people who are dead under that weight and need the freedom that is found in the real Jesus, not the one that the Mormon church calls out. And they need to know the true friend, Jesus, so that they can have life and peace and joy forever. Would you join with me over the next seven days in specifically praying for Awakened City Church, our partners, as they reach out in a special way and as they seek to make messengers of God's grace in Salt Lake City. And now this week, may we also be about making messengers of God's grace right here. Have a great day.